About 20 years ago, BMW introduced the very first BMW X5, and since then, it's sold over 2.2 million units. It's one of the most popular premium SUVs out there. But since then, there's a lot more other competition. So for 2019, BMW has rebuilt the entire X5 from the ground up. So today we're gonna to see if all the changes made on this X5 are enough to keep it up on top. Even though this new X5 is a complete redesign, it still obviously has that X5 look, except now it has a more rugged chiseled look. Starting from the front end, you have a more squared off kidney grill. You can see those active grill shutters in the front. The front valence is quite aggressive and sporty. This one's equipped with the BMW laser lights. It's actually a blue laser in behind and it gets turned into light. This is cutting edge stuff. This X5 is also equipped with the M Sport package. As you can see, it has these stylish 21 inch wheels as well as the blue calipers, the M Sport calipers. Now you just heard the vehicle open up and I didn't press anything. Why? Because the comfort access now is enhanced. You can turn it off or on, but it is enabled right now. So if you get within about a meter from the car, it will unlock for you. So you don't even have to actually touch the door handle anymore. If you walk away, it takes about, let's say about uh, 10 meters or so. Let's just try it. Here we go. Walking away. And it locked. It was actually about five meters. So yeah, get close and it unlocks. You know what? I like that feature. The only thing though is, is that you have to turn it on or off within the menu. Uh, and if you have your key fob with you and you're, let's say you're working around the house in the driveway, which I was yesterday, I was washing another vehicle beside this. And every time I got close, it would open and when I walked away, it would close or unlock and lock. So uh, that was kind of a pain. I was just too lazy to just put the key somewhere else. On to the back here now. I really like what they've done with the LED tail lights. They've, it's got some texture now. They're not flat. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent, I think, a little bit of the Porsche Macan, how their lights are kind of like scalloped away. Then you have these two really big exhaust pipes, but they're actually not exhaust pipes. They're just exhaust finishers. The exhaust pipes are inside, so the pipes really aren't that big. But it does have a really uh, square, masculine, aggressive look, just like the front. So everything is pretty cohesive, and it's a really nice updated look compared to the previous generation, I think. Now onto the back, there's a lot going on inside here. So we have a two-part tailgate, just like previous X5s, and you can actually specify if you want both to open at the same time by power or just, uh, just the top, depending on if you're using just the handle or this has the actual smart trunk, the kick feature. So a little kick under the bumper, lights blink, and I've got it set so they both open up. You can see this, power retractable tonneau cover here. That's a cool, really, really cool thing. And it's almost over engineered, but it's a part of a package. And what you can do is you can hit a button and you can see the floor is opening up here and the tonneau cover is tucking itself in by itself. That is really cool. Is that something that could go wrong later, I don't know, like uh, that is, <laughs> but right now it's pretty cool. So you can also hit automatic, so it'll come back up and it'll roll back when you close the lid. What I also like, the rubber. It's got this rubber on here, so that that's gonna really help things from not sliding around at all. And you have levers here to put down that second row of seats. This is not equipped with a third row. And then you have a compartment that has gas shock so it holds up very nice where the spare tire would be but there's no spare tire there so you can put other things in there hide them away there you go there is the back the inside of the x5 gets a new fresh look it's very driver centric uh first of all you'll notice it's a completely digital environment now. There are no analog gauges. You are welcomed with, well, welcome there, but a 12.3 inch screen in the center and a 12.3 inch screen for your instrument cluster. I like how BMW has incorporated these digital elements into the, the cabin or the, or the cockpit. First of all, they're pointed toward the driver, but they've also integrated them in nicely with the design of the interior. Instead of just having two rectangle tablets there, 
they kind of look like they belong there. Of course, with BMW, fit and finish and the materials are first rate. I've owned three BMWs, but it's really nice to see this just fresh design. You have this accent lighting that you can change, of course, kind of like, like the Mercedes-Benz style. All your controls are buttons here for your heating and your seat heat. By the way, not only are the seats heated, so are the armrests. Mercedes has that as well. And if you've never tried that, if you live in a colder climate, it does make a difference. I'm, I'm telling you. So we open up here and we have two drink holders. We have wireless charging, heated and cooled drink holders. So if you want to keep your coffee nice and hot, you can do that. Now, Android Auto is still not offered in BMW. However, Apple CarPlay is offered. Uh, it is an option though, but what I like about it is this has wireless Apple CarPlay. So no plugging in, no cables. You can just take your phone. Let's say here's my phone here, my Apple device, and I can put it into the cradle. So it's gonna wirelessly charge, but it's gonna connect and give me my Apple CarPlay for all my music, my entertainment, my uh, phone, all that stuff is gonna be on that screen. The screens are very, very crisp. One odd thing that I must say that I really have noticed is you have your speedometer and you have your tachometer on your gauges, but the tach kind of goes backwards in a way that conventionally you're used to a tachometer going clockwise. This goes counterclockwise. Not a deal breaker, but it's just something you have to get used to. Then you get to the iDrive system. This is version number seven. You have your iDrive controller as well. You have your touchscreen. And this system also has gesture control. We first saw that in the seven series from BMW a couple years ago. It's been fine tuned. It works quite well. Uh, just a simple, there you go, just like that. But you can do a lot of other things. I can even turn the screen right off if I want, just like that and turn it back on. I can change stations. I can, I can do a lot of things and it works very, very well. But the new iDrive system itself is pretty well one of the best out there. This one is equipped with a Harman Kardon stereo. You can also get the Bowers and Wilkins system. Comfort wise, I've always loved BMW seats. I really have. I've had, I had them in my 335, of course. You know, I had two X3s and they are very, very comfortable. They have good support, but they're not hard. Uh, they have lots of cushion to them. I like it. I like it a lot. So of course you can outfit your BMW however you want. There are so many different options that you have. This one's even equipped with night vision. Up top, a panoramic roof that almost goes the length of this vehicle. This one also has manual side shades for the side window. That is an option. Of course, there are a lot of different options you can get, but how you configure it, it's up to you. All right, and should also mention this has soft closed doors as well. That's an option. Uh, first thing you feel, spacious. A lot of headroom back here. That's why I'm not a fan of, of some of those coupes now, those SUV coupes, because you do get a little bit more of a cropped roof, not as much headroom, even though if your head's not touching, you, you just feel like you have a lot more room here. So uh, leg room, not too bad. Decent amount of leg room. My knees are quite far away. Check out, there's accent lighting even in the seat here. Room for three back here. We have... Uh, Drink holders there. Heated seats in the back, climate control. We have air vents in the middle, air vents on the side. And um, yeah, almost a flat floor as well. So it won't be too bad putting a person in the middle seat at all. Yeah. Now, a lot of you that have been watching for a while on this channel know that I've owned a few BMWs and all of them, I've had three of them, and they've all had this particular engine or this iteration of engine, which is a, a inline three liter twin scroll turbo. And obviously I like them because I've had three of them. Why? Because they are, <laughs> it's one of the best motors out there. I'm telling you, just listen to this thing. It puts out 335 horsepower and about equal amount of torque, but it feels a lot more than that. And that's matched to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, I just did a video collaboration with uh, Zach Spencer from Motormouth. 
you might know him and we have the other channel the sweet and sour channel where we do a little bit of a, a bantering back and forth and we talked about this engine and we both agree seriously does bmw underrate their engines or are they just matched so perfectly to the transmission they just do it so well that they feel just they, they just feel so crisp and precise just just listen to that we're just in comfort mode right now so if we want to go into sport mode let's go into sport mode right now that's going to optimize everything including the transmission oh it just it, it's so responsive this is such a great motor the torque is right there and it just feels like home for me seriously like it's really making me want to get back into a bmw again now there's a lot of new things on this x5 first of all for the first time you can get an off-road package so that comes with the air suspension which you can get with the m sport package as well but it comes with air suspension you get skid plates i didn't take it off road but i do have a friend that was on the launch of this vehicle when it came out and they did take it off road and he was very very surprised of how capable this x5 was in some pretty gnarly conditions and yeah that's saying a lot but truthfully who is going to buy an x5 and take it off road yeah I, I i'm thinking maybe the one percenters out there maybe if that but anyways it is available out there if you want also it seems like the year of suspension for premium suvs the new mercedes gle just came out and it has the new e-active body control so it actually lifts the body with these hydraulics uh it's pretty wild very different feeling that's for sure we drove that and then of course you know the new cayenne's out it has the air suspension plus it has the pdcc the porsche dynamic chassis control which has actuators that turn and it just keeps that car really nice and flat when you're cornering very noticeable and that is also available a uh, similar version on this bmw as well and if you want you can even get rear wheel steering as well this model is equipped with the air suspension and you can see on my right side here you can raise or lower the vehicle now at certain speeds it's going to do that by itself so at higher speeds it's going to lower the car down about 20 millimeters for better handling also when you put it into sport mode we're in a sport mode right now it lowers it down if we go back into comfort it's going to be hard to see this while we're driving but if we're stationary when you put in the comfort you can feel the vehicle actually rise up also for loading things in and out in the back you can actually lower the back for easier load in with the longer wheelbase and the wider track of course this is a great touring vehicle we're on the freeway right now uh, you could drive for hours and hours and hours with a whole car load full of people and everyone to be comfortable it's quiet it's responsive you got all that technology and if you really need to do any type of passing you can do that easily the x5 is available with a host of advanced driving aids everything from frontal collision warning pedestrian detection bicyclist detection rear cross traffic alert all those good things plus it has a driving assistance pro package with extended traffic jam assist so what does that all mean well the driving assistance pro package is your radar cruise control first of all keeping your distance from the next car in front of you plus it has lane keeping assist so we're going to turn that on right now there we go now in our head-up display we can see it's green we can adjust our distance with the buttons here and let's increase our speed a little bit we're increasing to 100k now if i take my hands off the wheel it is doing everything by itself everything's green right now and now it's blinking yellow and you have actual lights yellow lights just above where your thumbs are and as soon as you give some input into the steering wheel it turns off now if you go too far or too long those yellow lights will turn into red lights so that'll disengage the system or it's going to warn you so right now we are on yellow and it's telling me to put my hands back on the steering wheel my hands are ready and soon there we go red blinking red it's still active right now but i'm going to give it a little input now if i didn't do anything 
it started doing it right there. The warning came and it says vehicle is stopping. So that is a safeguard just in case you have that active and perhaps maybe you have a medical issue or something. It's going to, it didn't slam when the brakes on, but it did start applying them. I could feel it. It'll just slowly bring you to a stop just in case there's an emergency. So how about this extended traffic jam assist? Well, what that is, is if you're on a, a known highway or freeway and all the conditions are met, meaning that the weather's not too bad, for instance, so the cameras can see and everything's working and they can see the lines, but also you need to be going under a certain speed, under 60K, I believe, around 40 miles an hour, which is pretty well traffic jam speeds. Most of the time you're under that. And uh, also you have to be paying attention. See, with this system, there is an infrared camera in the middle of the gauge cluster there. And that is monitoring your face. It's got facial recognition. And if you're not paying attention, it will not work. So you have to be making sure that you're looking straight ahead. Then if you apply the actual cruise control on with that steering assist and everything under all those conditions, you'll get green lights on here and everywhere else, and it will drive by itself as long as all those conditions are met. So kind of like, let's say like the Cadillac Super Cruise system, other than Super Cruise works at higher speeds. This one is just for traffic jams. So yeah, you're seeing a lot of this technology in a lot of other vehicles. I welcome it, especially for the traffic jams. And believe it or not, it's morning right now or kind of mid morning. So the, the rush hour is over. I can't believe it. I'm actually looking for traffic and I can't find it. One thing I really want to show you is the cameras on this car. They're pretty incredible. First of all, you can go to 3D views because it's a 360 camera. You can move the camera around and it superimposes this graphic of the X5 around you. It's pretty wild. But also, if you go into your parking here, there are, there's automated parking. So you can do per perpendicular or parallel parking. Um, a lot of cars have that. Now, this is interesting. This is a new backup assistant. So we're going to hit that and we're going to go into the drive now. So where this could be handy, imagine, let's say we're not in a parking lot here. We're in an underground parking lot and it's, uh, there's a lot of posts around and it's, it's tight. So we're just going to pretend we're going to park in between two posts here or this particular car. And, and now look at the front camera. It moves like with us. It's wild. Back up and systems. Okay. So now put it to park. So let's say we are going to get out of the vehicle and you know, the next morning, even we get into our car. Now, if we want to back up, what it does, it's remember the last 50 meters of where we pulled in. So the backup assistant is on and I'm going to put it into reverse. Mirrors have turned. Now I'm operating the brake and the accelerator, but I am not steering. And so what it's doing, it's copying exactly what I did to get in hands free. And then you just from there, you can go on your way. Now that's only going to be really handy if you're parking uh, within some immobile objects. Obviously, if those cars moved or another car went closer, well, that's probably not a good thing, but you do have sensors that are probably going to tell you, watch out. I really think BMW has hit it out of the park with this new X5 and that's coming from someone that's driven a lot of its competitors very recently like the Mercedes GLE, the Porsche Cayenne, the Range Rover Velar, just to name a few. This is pretty well the complete package. You get the styling, you get the room, you get the function, you have the technology and of course you have the amazing drive. 
If you're in the market for a premium SUV, make sure you take one of these X5 for a test drive. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. <laughs>